That's a big old structure out right here in the middle of nowhere. Sure is, this is the last fixed rig. She's riding about 1,100 foot of water. Everything from here on out will all be floaters. Oh man, go ahead. You gotta spin and go up to the bow. Are we here? Yeah, we're definitely here. They're popping. It's been too long, Mike, too long. Go up to the bow, give it a cast out to the left. There's a whole pot of them. They're jumping because they're happy. All right, brother, here we go. First cast of the day. Eleven hundred foot in front of DOA swimming mullet. There he is. Fish yeah. on, baby. That's not too bad. The second jig. Is that music or is that music? Let's run back to the back. We're going to introduce you who we're with today. Well, welcome to this episode of Addict to Fishing. We're with my buddy here, Captain Mike Ellis, out of Venice, Louisiana. And if you saw that big structure behind us just a second ago, we're off fishing yellowfin tuna, blackfin tuna, wahoo. Maybe a few dolphin this time. The water's just about warm enough. But right now, we don't know what we got on. It's probably a little blackfin. I hope you don't mind, but uh, right there's way too many fish around right now to uh, <laughs> not make a cast. <clears throat> uh. Let's give these new blue ones a workout, huh? What are you doing? Well, the object of today's show is tuna. And we pulled up here to the wreck, and Mike's eyes lit up because all we saw was birds diving everywhere and tuna in the air. Woo, nice yellow. Woo, little yellow. Welcome feather. to the back, and I'll go ahead and grab it for you. First one of the day, giving these new blue rods a test. I love these things. They're definitely holding up. Great action on it. All right, Miguel, finally making a good one for offshore. For what we do here, I was definitely impressed from looking at them last night. I think you just got a little life. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that fish. Woo. Uh, are you gonna tail grab him? Oh, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna get his gill. Ouch. You try to release him? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. How about when swimming? Now folks, this is something I use inshore all the time. A DOA swimming mullet. Look, you ate the eyes off of it. Let me see that fish. <laughs> Good job, Blair. Yellowfin tuna, baby. That is the targeted species. Y'all stay tuned to Addictive Fishing right here. We're gonna be right back with some more. Let's go then. There you go. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Hey, Mike, look at him right out here, brother. All right. Welcome back. We're in the yellow fins again. Let's see what happens. Basically, it's DOA swimming mullet. I toss it out and just let it sink down, let it sink down. And as it's sinking, it looks like it's swimming down, trying to get away. A couple of jigs, let's see what happened. It, it, it worked the first time. I'm right in the middle of them over there. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my top out there. It don't feel like a tuna. It feels like a dolphin. Yeah, we got a scatter and a... Oh, here uh -oh. he is. There we go. I think he just realized he was hooked. Well, now we doubled up on him. Ah, man, I popped that one off, but it doesn't matter. 360 degrees or anywhere you look, the fish are all over. Just cast, you'll get another one. Mike got chopped. I think, it feels like dead weight. We really don't have too many problems with sharks, but every once in a while, we'll get them. Is that a black fin? Uh, I can't tell. It looks like he may be a nice... Yeah, black nice fin. Black. What's that under him? No, those are sharks there. Shark? Yeah. Look at them, they're hungry oh. too. <laughs> Put him around. Got him? Little, little black, black fin here. Fin tuna. Little, uh, had a little run in with uh, the tax man down there. That would be a man in the gray suit, otherwise known as a shark. <laughs> Well, what do you Pretty do with fish. the black fins? You use these for sometimes chunking tuna bait. Oh, don't a you? lot of times we'll use them for bait. Um, 
this size right here is perfect. The fish are biting on the top good enough. We'll get him chilled out and it'll make great, you know, great sashimi tonight. Okay. Or want... we can let him go. Go ahead and toss that one back. There's plenty here. Off he Off goes. Off go. I need to rig me up another bait. Yeah, you do. Blink, we'll down. have one on in a second. <laughs> down, 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 down it goes. You kind of get impatient because it's 1,100 feet here and you got to just let it sink as far as it can because it'll never hit the bottom. You want it to hit down there with them tuna are down about 100 feet though. So now that cast I just did was 180 feet out. Now it should be about 150 feet right below the boat. There he is. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Looks like a nice one. I don't know, I was able to stop him pretty quick there. You said we didn't catch him until our arms fall off? I believe so today. <laughs> That was some serious fog coming out here this morning. Gotta yeah, this time, of, this time of the year, it's bad. Got to trust that radar. That water's what, at 40, about 45 40, degrees 44 right degrees, yes. We're talking about the Mississippi River as it's dumping out here into the Gulf. And we couldn't even break the cameras out this morning because the fog was just so thick. It looked like pea soup out here. Yeah, you look north, you can still see fog in the Yeah, in the there's distance. quite a few banks coming out. At least it's burning off by the time it gets this far out. Usually, yes. Well, brother, we're flat giving these new rods a workout. Very impressive so far, definitely impressive. There's your fish. And a big shark. Oh, he's hungry. You want to reach down and grab him, Mike? Yeah, let me grab him real quick. No sense feeding the tax don't, man. Don't mean need to feed the man in a gray suit. Woo! Blackfin. Let's pop him off and toss him right back All in. All right. Baby. If uh -oh. I can get him head first, he should make it past him. Swim, 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 swim. Good, he made it. Let's uh, let's get set back up and get another one. Sounds good to me. Captain Mike Ellis, Minnes, Louisiana. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more addictive fishing. Let's go then. You got one on Mike? There he is, Flip. He's got a black fin on or something now. Probably black fin will close to the rig. Nice one on the jig. That's eerie how that fog rolls in like that, huh, Blair? In a heartbeat. Well, welcome back, y'all. We are still sitting out at the same rig. It looks a little different. We just had a nice big fog bank roll in. We're fishing off of Venice, Louisiana, about 1,100 feet of water, and I don't see any oil whatsoever out here. I mean, the fishing's different, but you can't really blame, there's nothing you can blame on the oil that I'm seeing right now. Yeah. It's all just, just fishing. Hey, you fry them in oil anyway, right? You fry them in oil. <laughs> <laughs> We've been inshore, now we're offshore, catching yellowfin, we were catching redfish and trout and black drum inshore. There he is, Blair. You got one on Mike? Yep. And he's Pop got a black fin on or something now. Nice one on the jig. Get him, son. Oh, that's a Roland Martin son there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think something's after him. Yeah, and we caught up with him. You say think something was after him? I believe so. He's not uh, not acting quite right. Coming up, huh? I don't think I got much left of him. <laughs> a bit of weight to him, maybe. That's what one did to me. Come up, come up, come all of a sudden. Doo! There you see him. Oh, a little yellow. Is it? Like a small yellow. Now it's just a good black. Good black fin. That'd be a perfect bait size, especially in the summer if we're gonna try to live bait a marlin. Yeah. It'd be candy right there. That'd be him, huh? That would be him. You getting about ready, Mike? Yeah, he's right here. Step back for you. Black fin tuna. Let me show you something really neat that I just find fascinating about a tuna. It's how they can go through the water so fast 
the peg fins actually fold back into the body and if you see there's a little ridge right here in their body and if you ever get out here with Mike and catch one look at this it is absolutely cool they fold that back down and Mike you said they fold their dorsal down yeah. too it yeah just, also the dorsal goes right in that little slot it goes in and just becomes perfectly hydrodynamic that is a good specimen yeah, and also when you're spear fishing these, yeah. all you see is the little finlets right there. You'll just see, it'll just, they're not a fin moving at all, and all of a sudden those little finlets will start twitching, and it's gone. You never see any fin movement at all. Well, let's jolt this guy back in. All right, and, send uh, him in head first and another. charge him up. And off he went. And off he went. Awesome. We're gonna get another one. Now what Mike did here, it kind of, the fog bank came in and they didn't, they weren't popping on anymore, so Mike put on a deep jig, Dropped it straight down and just basically jigging what a hundred. Dropped about 150 foot. Unbelievable. Cranked it two, three times and that was it. All you gotta do is come with Mike, he can tell you what to do. <laughs> I'm gonna get my jig. See if we can't find another one like that. If you see Blair, you look up there, you got a man of war jellyfish. Yeah. What these tuners are doing is they're coming up under the man of wars. Eating those and they're baby. busting the man of wars to get the little minnows out from underneath them. Oh, we ate it. There he is. <laughs> Thank you, so now. Ugh. Shaking that head, brother. Shaking that head. Now he's running. <laughs> awesome, man. Good job. I think that's the man there. I believe so. Man in the yellow suit. Oh, we just saw them come up under those man wars a minute ago. So they eat those little man o war fish? Little, it's like a little, kind of real bright blue back bait underneath those man o wars. Yeah, this is a good one. Look just, just look just south of us, Blair. Uh, I'm a little busy. <laughs> I think it's one of the ones we saw jump. Yeah. Yeah, these rods are perfect for out here in these size fish. Oh, he's going the other way again. The rod does have great action on it. Most anybody that knows these past few shows I've been at doing these at the trade shows, I've been showing them these and bending them over. Anybody ever knows this is a short version of it. This is the 7.6, and I tell you what, it has some power. Well, just looking at it now, you got plenty of backbone, but still enough tip to throw those lighter lures at these tuna. Yeah. Oh yeah, for what we do, that's that's perfect. You don't need anything more than that. So many people try to override themselves and take all the fun out of it. When I first started coming out here, y'all were using 30 wides and 60 wides. 50 wides on bent butts. We kind of, uh, kind of evolved a little bit from that. Well, at certain times of the year, you need it though, don't you? October, we'll use 50s and 100, 130 pound mainline chumming the fish behind the shrimp boats or on a typical winter pattern when we're on the different humps and stuff like that. Yeah. We had used 50s and 80 pound, 100 pound line, but. It's so much more fun. On definitely a, a lot line. more fun. I like using spin so much more than I do conventional because it just, you feel the fish more. Feel the of, fish more. Instead of fighting him with a pool cue. I tell you what, if this is a black fin, he's going to be a monster. I believe that was one of those nice yellows we saw popping. Ooh, we're going to eat the back, brother. Staying down there at Cajun Fishing Adventures with Ryan Lambert. Puts on a good operation up there. Oh yeah, he said, uh, he said, make sure you bring some tuna back if you get a couple. I know you will with Mike. <laughs> I think we're gonna work on bringing a couple back. Woo, that's a good one there, bro. Nice yellow. Probably 50. 50? Yeah, uh, maybe you're shy of it. I caught a redfish in the marsh yesterday that was 50 pounds. <laughs> this one might pull that one backwards. Yeah, I think you're right. This one here would, uh, this one here definitely would have pulled that one backwards all day long. Nice fish, Blair. That is a good one. You want to walk back again? Yeah, let's walk them on back and let's see if we can't uh, introduce that one to the grill tonight. You got it, brother. I think this one will fit on the grill. <laughs> In a couple of pieces. And I thank goodness for that cigar fluorocarbon. Good to go. Yes, sir, brother. That is going to be some good eats tonight. There we go. 
Look okay. that swimming mullet down in his throat, man. <laughs> Did he want that or what? He liked it. Yellowfin tuna, y'all stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with some more addictive fishing. That one folds down too. Woo, hydrodynamic. That's why he was pulling that drag out so good. We're gonna be right back with some more yellowfin tuna. Y'all stay tuned. Let's go then. This one ain't. Anything hang out under them chubs? I don't think anything's under them. They're just, they must have washed dishes from lunch. You think you might need to change it up a little bit? Make it go down or try jigging a little different? Yeah, go ahead and let it drop down a little bit. These fish on the sounder, they look like they're holding a little deeper. Give it a shot and see what happens. All right. I just threw it about 60 yards out there, about 180 feet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it go down. Mike said, just let it go down, down, down in the water column. We got the rig behind us and the water's coming to us. So what I'm gonna do is let it go down every once in a while, just kind of give it a little pop. See what they think about that mullet. Right there at 11 o'clock, Blair, look at them all out of range. This one ain't. <clears throat> Come on. Must be a black fin. Hadn't done a big run yet. Big. Well, there I go speaking. Oh yeah, brother. Awesome. Oh, well, now he's feeling a little better. Feeling like a black fin though. There is color. All right, let me get this deep jig out. Big, big black fin. All right. A football. You know what? Let's see if I can roll a Martin this one. Oh, get this one out without bleeding. And I tell you what, they love those DOA mullet. Nice fish, Blair. A little football. Come on, little football, I'm gonna let you go. Some fish tacos there. Fish tacos with that one? Fish tacos. Well, really, no matter what kind of tuna they are, they're all tasty and they don't go to waste. No, they don't. Especially here on Highway 23. <laughs> That's the road down to Venice. I'm gonna get rigged up and get me another one. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what we were using out there today. A Little bit different today because the fog rolled in on us out there and it looked like pea soup. We were probably 25 yards away from the rig and couldn't see it. Safety concerns, we went ahead and headed back in. Plus Mike wanted to head up and get some of these baits. And the baits are one of my favorite. It's a DOA swimming mullet. Got a nice strong hook for those yellowfin tuna out there. And this bait works on any pelagic that eats mullet. Great little bait. You saw it working, getting the job done. Using 60 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon leader. A little bit heavier leader than what I'm used to using because those tuna have really rough mouths and can really chafe up your leader. So kind of stepped it up a little bit. Using 30 pound test Finn's original PRT. Didn't have any wind conditions out there to really concern me with. And if you notice the new rods, this is the 7.2 model. They have really stepped it up. Right McGill with this S-curve technology. These are the offshore models and I can't wait to get some redemption on some of those permit down in Southwest Florida with this rod. The reels. Got some bigger reels coming out too, from a 5,000 all the way up to an 8,000 size reel. There's your bait check for today. Remember one thing though, every season starts right here at Dick's. Don't forget about the website, addictivefishing.com, and if you'll ever get a chance to come down here and fish Venice, Louisiana, make sure you look up Mike Ellis. He is the man on these yellowfin tuna down here. That's about it for the bait check and the show. We'll see y'all next week. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. Hello. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I about went swimming. Nice little football. Oh! And that's the way that works. That's your bait check for today. Remember one thing. 
my phone's going off. 